Hi guys, it's Skinboot here, and today what I'm going to be bringing you guys is actually a Verdun video. Now, in today's video, what I want to look into is Verdun itself, and more importantly, should you actually buy the game in 2019? So, Verdun is an online-only first-person shooter set in the First World War, developed by a small indie team called Black Mill Games, which also developed a sequel, I guess you could say, to Verdun called Tannenberg that focuses on the Eastern Front in the First World War. Now, as the name implies, Verdun is set on the Western Front and holds a load of maps that you would typically see from a First World War experience, like Flanders, Somme, and many more. The main game mode of Verdun is something called Front Lines, which is by far the most popular means of playing the game. Now, Front Lines simulates actual trench warfare whereby you either start off by attacking or defending a trench. Attackers will have to fall back to their own trench if the enemies is not captured, whereby the attackers then become the defenders, and so on. The games can only be won by capturing trenches, which grants a point. So like the actual First World War, it is very unlikely to win or lose a match of the done, because like actual trench warfare, there is an insane loss of life for virtually no reward. Now, Verdun was initially released as an early access game back in 2008. And 13. However, in 2019, it is out of early access with frequent updates, large free content packs, and even a console port to the PlayStation 4. Okay, so I want to start off with the pros and talk about what Verdun does really goddamn well. And the first thing which I will always bring up when it comes down to this is the absolutely incredible atmosphere. So World War One was famously known for the mud, the PTSD, and the insane loss of life. Verdun nails this atmosphere absolutely perfectly. You can crawl through all of these trenches littered with corpses, all while your squad are getting torn down by machine guns, limbs are being blown off by artillery, faces being caved in with bullets, and dying soldiers screaming out for their mums. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty serious stuff. More often than not, you're just sat cowering in the corner of your trench while some angry Austrian man screams his battle cry and explosions are just going going off all around you. Some people like to refer to Verdun as the PTSD simulator, and that is very, very goddamn true. In recent times, Verdun has actually received an audio update that has improved the gun noises, explosions, and ambience to make for a truly immersive experience. If you have a nice pair of headphones, like, you know, some surround sound ones with plenty of bass, then trust me, you're going to be very, very engrossed in this world in which you're playing in. The atmosphere of Verdun is is probably one of the best things about the game. It is what sets it up, it is what makes it unique, and ultimately, the rest of the gameplay kind of just bounces off and is amplified by this absolutely crazy ambience that it achieves. Okay, next up, we have an incredibly accurate First World War game. Now, World War One is a very tough war to make a game about because it was less about being some Rambo demigod like World War Two games usually are, and is more about sitting patiently, getting mowed down by a gun placement, and ultimately gaining nothing in the process. Verdun is the only accurate World War One first-person shooter out there, and it does what Battlefield 1 failed to do, as in capture the guns, the ethnicities, and gender of its soldiers, and the movement of a Red Orchestra-style game. Battlefield 1 is uh, one of those games where I wouldn't even class it as a First World War game. It's more like a World War II game, or maybe like an alternate timeline World War One game. And that is, you know, fair enough. It is a AAA game after all. And as I said, the First World War is extremely hard to base a game around because of the complete lack of gameplay and ultimately gun customization. Verdun is very much a realistic game, something which resembles Red Orchestra or something of the sorts. So the time period actually fits in really well. You're obviously only going to be using bolt action rifles, maybe an MG, maybe a flame thrower and if you're lucky an SMG but for the most part people are running around with Lee Enfields and Mauser pistols so it is extremely accurate to the time period which to be fair given the context of the time is incredibly hard to get and finally we have the fact that Verdun is a one-time purchase there are no loot boxes 
no skins, no paid DLC, and the game also receives free content updates. Now, for an online game in the modern day, this is very, very rare. And even as an early access game, you know, way back, it was still ethical. It didn't have all of these Ark Survival Evolved DLCs while it's still in early access. There are absolutely zero scummy business practices going on here. Now, I know it sounds bad to give this as a pro, but as I said, considering it is an online game and and online games in the modern day are unfortunately known for just abusing the shit out of paywalls, cosmetics, and things like that. I can't help but bring it up. Okay, so moving on to the cons now, and the first one which I will always bring up is the fact that Verdun has a very, very small player base. Now, Frontlines now supports 64 players. It used to be 32, and 64 was kind of like this dream which would never happen, but 64 is now the norm. However, the community of Verdun is so small, you know, we're talking like a couple hundred, that you will often play with and against bots. Now, this isn't a terrible thing. The bot Bots aren't brain dead, they're somewhat competent, not the best but also not the worst. However, killing more bots than actual real players can sometimes get a little bit boring. Also, because of the fact that the game is quite low key and the community isn't all that big, finding a game outside of European or US servers is going to be a challenge. And from what I've heard, the worst people to suffer from this are the Australians. So unfortunately, if you're on the other side of the fucking world, it might be a little hard to find a game. Next up, the game can feel extremely clunky and also buggy at some points. Verdun very much plays like an early access game. You know, the animations are quite stiff, the movement is sometimes unresponsive, and I've even had it where key bindings will just stop working for no reason. Close quarters combat is especially noticeable with melee and dodging bullets. Verdun just kind of lacks that fluidity of something like Battlefield 1, where it's very smooth, all the animations are on point, but that is, again, kind of expected when this is an indie studio and not fucking dice. It has its own kind of rustic charm to it, and in a way, I think the movement kind of fits the realistic playstyle, because you're not going to be speeding around doing all these fucking drop shots and jump shots and things like that, so in a way, it does kind of fit the atmosphere and the way that you play the game, but yeah, it can be jarring at some points in time. And finally, we have the lack of a progression system. So Verdun does indeed have a leveling system, and I believe it also has a prestige system now, which was introduced in a recent update. But the problem is, you don't really get anything from leveling up. So obviously guns can't be customized since it's, uh, you know, 1915, but basic things like maybe unlocking uniforms cannot be done. Leveling is ultimately pointless, aside from maybe unlocking a new class variant, but you get to the point where you've bought every possible class for every single faction, and you sort of have nothing else to do. I'd be very much open to buying uniforms or maybe even voice packs with the in-game currency, because at the moment, once you have bought out all of the classes, there is near enough nothing to do. So to put it into basic terms, you don't really play Verdun to grind or to get a reward. There isn't really any instant gratification here. You play the game more for fun and more for atmosphere. Now to some people, this obviously isn't a problem. A lot of people just like to play games to experience something, to get lost in something. So having like a leveling system or a loot system isn't necessarily a deal breaker, but I do feel like like for an online game, it would make a lot more sense to put some time and effort into maybe a leveling system or some kind of upgrade system that is uh, way more fluid and doesn't get completely maxed out in the first 20 to 30 hours of playing the game. So in conclusion, Verdun is an absolutely incredible game for an indie studio. Realistic first person shooter games like Rising Storm, Insurgency and Squad are very hard to get into. They're very kind of niche games with a, a, a very, very precise player base, but they are ultimately very, very rewarding. And Verdun is the exact same. You will be dying a lot and you will be getting angry a lot, but that is all part of the learning. Verdun is a game of learning, but this adapting and getting used to things and feeling yourself get physically better and not just get better with a fake rank that has been assigned to your player allows for an absolute boatload of fun. Verdun at 80% off is an absolute steal and 
and even if you don't buy it give it a chance when it is free please 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 do pick it up because it is a damn good game so guys that's just about all i have to say for this video but i do hope that you guys enjoyed and as always if you did enjoy then please do feel free to leave a like on the video and if you guys could also subscribe to mzk then that'd be absolutely fantastic and as always i will see you guys on my next video this is skimboot signing out